Welcome to Retro Upgrade. This time we'll be looking at how I fixed this front panel. It didn't turn on. So we opened it up and looked at it. So it was attached with two screws and a little bracket. This will be a voiceover video because I couldn't record it with sound. Uh, the light works. Uh, I have tested it out. It uses 5 volts. I have the little tester thingy put on. I use it to measure resistance on small components, but it also works to pass current from the power supply. Let's see if it's, it shows up on uh, video. It's kind of hard to see, but it does light up. I'll turn off the lights here. So it's kind of faint, but it's, it's a nice effect for an old box. If you hear any noise from the background, it's my daughter and uh, the AC is running at full blast. It's 40 plus degrees here, so it's really warm. So the first thing I noticed was our ripped uh, connector. It's uh, just uh, four pins. And uh, the traces are coming off the board, so we have to repair that as well. And we have to figure out what everything is, uh, because there are multiple connectors and uh, markings. The board itself seems to be in okay shape. It's an old style LCD display, and it has some interconnects on the side. If you get a garbled picture, this is the first place you have to look. Uh, because it doesn't have the pins for anything. Uh, and it, uh, nothing was connected to it when I opened it up, so could be that the power is on the ripped connector. And yeah, it says it on the board, power in. So There is uh, some extra connectors. It says a external HDD and HDD display, so probably activity sensors and stuff. So here you get a close-up of the damage. I'm trying to fix the camera here so you can get a better picture. There we go. So I reduced glare. Okay, so the the pads are cleanly ripped off. Uh, it took a bit of the trace off, and we have to bridge some contacts here. I'm just checking to see how well it's adhered to the board the rest of the trace i'm scraping off some solder mask as well to prepare it for soldering i usually use my tweezers for this you can use a fiberglass pen or um, maybe a small rotary tool as you can see it's kind of loose on that side but that's fine because there is a resistor that i can uh, attach a wire to We need to clean off the board to see clearly what I need to do to fix this. There seems to be one of the traces that survived, uh, the last one here. I think this is a ground uh, ground plane trace. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, I did figure it out eventually. I can't really remember exactly what I did. Sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, like you know, my camera setup is uh, on a old uh, IKEA lamp uh, holder thingy so I, I need to make a more stable microscope holder but this works for now okay so I'm looking around the board to see if there's more damage doesn't seem to be there is a jumper here for uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit it's set on Celsius I'm guessing uh, so that's really nice uh, this, according to what I can see on pictures online, I can't really find any information on how this works or any schematics or anything. It's ticked on orange here. So I looked at a few pictures and uh, it seems to be a temperature, temperature sensor and uh, activity monitor. So it shows uh, HDD activity and stuff on the display. Uh, for the temperature sensing, I'm guessing it uses a thermal uh, what's it called? Uh, a thermal probe of some kind, usually a resistive one. Uh, I do have some 
for the 3D printer, but I don't think it's the same type. Uh, the ones I use for the 3D printer are NTC based. Uh, it's a small uh, resistor that changes value depending on the heat. And it goes up to like 400 degrees C. You're, you don't need that accuracy on this thing, obviously. Uh, I do have another uh, uh, display thingy uh, that I got from Richard that has actually temperature sensing as well. It does have some uh, thermistors or yeah. So maybe I can steal one of those to fix this. Uh, I'm just ripping off everything that's loose so it doesn't interfere later. There's some kind of uh, conformal coating or crud on this. Just checking see if there's no more damage. So the way to fix this normally is wires. Uh, you use copper wires, uh, enameled mostly, so you don't short anything out. You can also use uh, old capacitor legs uh, and even trace repair kits. Uh, you can see one of those here. I'll show one on the screen right now. It uh, They sell them on AliExpress. They're really good. I ha I don't have one, but I'm going to order up a few because uh, this is quite big traces in comparison uh, to what you can get on a laptop or uh, a video game console from the from nowadays. Uh, it, traces are really small, and a wire is actually quite hard to maneuver around. These come with the pad and everything, so perfect. Okay, so time to clean up here to see exactly how much damage there is. I'm using my trusty spray bottle with IPA. This is a 96% IPA, I think. Yeah. And uh, that's the highest I can get locally here on the island. There wasn't much dirt or not. But uh, Richard managed, uh, from La Learner Electronics Repair, managed to <laughs> acquire some 99% uh, from AliExpress. I didn't know you could order that stuff from Aliexpress and it actually got here uh, because Aliexpress uh, stuff that's not liquid it always arrives but liquid stuff I have a lot of issues getting it through customs uh, they usually don't know what it is and they just just reject it flat out uh, there is something here looks like a plastic bit so nothing really so this uses a glob top, uh, a epoxy encased chip to save on the chip casing, I'm guessing, or to make it impossible to repair, <laughs> pretty much. So the only thing that worries me is these two on the right, uh, the connector pads, because the wires there are really small. So if the pad rips completely, it's going to be hard to attach a wire there. Okay, so let's start out with one, uh, figuring out how this works. So these two are data pins, probably for the thermistor to measure the temperature, the ones that I'm scraping right now. And the other two should be power and ground, but I have n need to figure out which one is which, if it's not marked, and, it, and it's not, unfortunately. It would be a lot easier if it was. I'm, uh, my UV light died, so I have I bought a new one, it's on its way, but for now I can't put solder mask on uh, things I fix. It's fine in this case because it's indoors, um, doesn't really rust, and I'll fix it later. I'm just preparing a little bit to see if uh, I can put some solder on, so I can attach wires and make it actually work so to power uh, that's why I think the two left uh, most right ones are power or the ones on the bottom in this case uh, for this pad I have to attach to the other side of the pad as well because the trace is actually on that side I could uh, practically put a wire from the capacitor and resistor up top and down to the pad 
but uh, sometimes it's just easier to put a small wire from the trace to the pad. I'm just looking around uh, because if they ripped off the connector, it's probably when they disassembled the front and just pulled out. Just rip it out, uh, ripped it out. But if they pulled with enough force, they could uh, have actually damaged something else. The diode, I'm not really sure if it's okay. The one on the bottom right, but it's a lit looks a little burnt. But they usually do. They are glass encased diodes. So we need to bridge these two contacts from there to the resistor over here. So we can solder down a connector. Uh, I usually don't use the through hole after the connector has been ripped off like this. Just because uh, there's nothing to attach to. And the back side of this has the LCD screen. So I can't re really reach the back side. And uh, I think it's a single sided board. Uh, I think I verified that in one occasion. I haven't really recorded that I think so solder mask is quite hard so you, you, you can go pretty aggressive on this but do clean up with a little IPA to check your progress you don't want to damage more than it already is obviously It still has some of the conformal coating stuff uh, on around here, so I'm just scraping off a little bit more. I don't want it getting in the solder. Okay, so important part here. To repair something like this, uh, you need to have flux. I'm checking now, yeah, if there are components underneath, and there aren't, so it looks like a single-sided board. It's brown, so that's a good indicator. There you can see the interconnects from the LCD to the top board. Sorry for the blurry image, nothing I can do about that. The focal point doesn't change automatically. I am uh, building a few new lights uh, for the microscope and right now I'm using an overhead light that's for outside use and it's a LED light so I get uh, some bars right over the picture, the 60 or 50 hertz signal from the power lines go through. And uh, the ones I'm going to build are high-frequency LED drivers instead, and uh, those will uh, not flicker on uh, camera. They flicker so so fast it doesn't show up. So I'm just tracing the wires here from one of the connectors to the LCD, the back for the black backlight. And it seems to go through this zero ohm resistor that's acting as a fuse. I'm guessing. So this should be the positive because you fuse the positive side normally. So we're tracing out the other side now. Uh, let's see where it goes. It goes through a resistor there. Comes from here, goes under the resistor doesn't go anywhere on this side so we go up follow it and it goes to the ground plane the big big ground plane here so so that's really good that makes it a lot easier to identify so it's power on the left ground on the right if you're looking at it from from the way I'm looking at it right now so it's upside down I'm guessing because the, all the markings are upside down Okay, so I have these, the pin headers, that should work well enough to make a new connector. 
I'll be using four of these. So I'm snapping one off now. So that I was checking the pitch, uh, so uh, the spacing is correct. So I don't need to worry about bending pins or stuff to make it fit. I have a connector uh, that fits here, but because it's through hole, I can't really solder it on the other side. So this is a better solution just to solder it here. So I'm just marking plus and minus just in case because I'm doing this with the visitors at home. They're sleeping right now, so I can't really talk. So, and I am a, a person that remembers things I hear, but not, not necessarily I see. <laughs> so, the trick to cutting these efficiently is to just hold one side with tweezers or something and then just bend on, on the snapping line. Uh, really easy to do. So I'm just testing the fit, should be nice, and uh, the pitch is exactly the same as the one that was there. I'm guessing this was lying down, because if it sticks out like this, the wire will get caught in the fan that's exactly behind this. Uh, the actual LCD has a fan exactly behind, so that will probably hit. So it has to be bent 90 degrees. Not a hard thing to do, actually, but please let me know if uh, you want me to discuss something special in some video. Maybe I missed something. I'm not the best at repairing, obviously, uh, compared to Richard from Learning Electronics Repair. I'm a newbie on some stuff. He, I do have him beat on consoles because I have the experience and I know what can break on them. But on uh, general electronics, power supplies, stuff like that, he's a lot better. I'm still learning, but... So this is the most important part, use flux, a lot of it. <laughs> so you can get nice and clean joints and you, you can uh, make the traces and bridges. This goes for even the repair kits, use flux. So I'm using my curved tip, I like this one. I don't know if it's hot enough here. It looks like it. So if if you're having issues getting it to stick, just use a bigger tip that transfers a lot more heat. I'm guessing this is because of the conformal coating. It's taking a while and my temperature is probably too low. I'm bumping up the temperature from uh, 320, I think, to 380. Like I said, I'm making the voiceover after the fact. Because I, I couldn't really work during the time I had visitors at home. This is at 3 in the morning, by the way, I recorded this. So There we go. It's starting to stick. Sometimes it helps to scrape a little bit with the soldering iron. I have uh, one of these cheap Chinese soldering irons, so it doesn't get as hot as it says. So 380 may be closer to, let's say, uh, 320 or so. Still good enough to do the job, like you can see, but yeah, you still have to wait a while for it to heat up. So when you're doing this with a curved tip, I'm used to it, but be careful with the nearby components, but because you usually use the fat part to heat up bigger, bigger stuff. But you can hit with a tip, a small resistor or capacitor, and you can re uh, remove it without even noticing. I do have the camera to go back to, so. I'm fine on my side, but if you're not recording yourself doing it, <laughs> then you can uh, screw up. So we're cleaning up here. See the how much solder I got on the joints. It looks decent. Sorry for the shaky cam. Uh, like I said, I am thinking of welding together a microscope holder with a very heavy foot and uh, a mechanism to move it around. Uh, sliding bars mostly 
the same design as the normal microscopes you can see over here I will show you a picture of a, a, a commercial one I'm just cleaning the PCB on on the back here so okay we're back so as you can see I got some solder on so looks fine uh, when you do this kind of work this will never be as strong as the original uh, PCB but considering uh, the alternative that this gets thrown out I could change this out to a, a TFT display with an Arduino and a temperature sensor and everything else it has and it will be fine I will have a full color display and show the data right there but this is an original piece of the case uh, so here I'm bending the pins I forgot I recorded this okay we're back so I bent them 90 degrees the bottom pins was thinking of putting it like this and soldering it on that would have worked quite well actually The last pin is not really bent like it should. These legs are not very long, so that's why I decided against that mounting at the moment. Could get away with it, obviously. Just trying out the fit, checking if I could solder this, and uh, probably I can. I just solder it on with the remaining pad, and just put wires from the backside. What that would be nice and dandy, but I, I can't remember the reason. But I, I want, I didn't want an upward-facing connector. And I don't want to risk putting the connector to the other side because then it can short out against the p passive components like the capacitors and stuff. So I decided on putting it so it points straight out. But because I bent the pins, it's uh, a lot shorter than it was before. So it's easier to manage the wire so it doesn't crash into the fan that's behind it. Best solution, of course, is get a connector that fits here, uh, a real one. But this works for now. So I'll be doing something like this, soldering it in place so I can reach underneath with the wires. I already did this so it worked out fine I did put some super glue on after I soldered everything ju just just to keep it in place uh, I usually no use uh, a hot melt gl glue but in this case it would get everywhere and probably clump up too much so I can't get the uh, sensor wires in or the power wires, so better do it with super glue this time. So, uh, doing this kind of work, you have to measure twice and solder once because every time you put heat on those joints, there is a opportunity of them just getting loose from the board. So, uh, the less you heat you put in, the bigger the chance is that it survives and stays working and uh, like I said before a lot of flux I use paste flux uh, f uh, it's probably a, a copy brand but it, it works well enough just pre-thinning the legs You maybe shouldn't be holding this with your fingers if you're squeamish about the heat. 
This is quite fiddly and gets really hot really fast. <laughs> it's metal, after all. So I think I decided on holding it with tweezers instead because it was getting hot. Yep, I did. So I'm just attaching the first leg. Trying to, at least. So the trick here is to keep the heat, heat on both the pad and the leg. Just enough so it fuses. There we go. And not the best job I've done ever, but it's it's functional. I'll clean up the solder joint in a little while. So I'm pre-tinning the tip on the soldering iron, just to make this a lot faster. Just checking the alignment. Do you see what I mean with the trace? I'm pulling it off as we speak. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. Oh, I, and uh, I didn't notice right away, but I had put it one step to the left. <laughs> so I was misaligned. This is the way to do it. I'm hitting the pad and the leg at the same time. I'm trying to get it to work, but it's fiddly. It's very small. Generally a pain in the ass to fix. <laughs> It's not impossible, it just takes a little time. And before you ask, yes, I have a small fan extracting the fumes. <laughs> I've ne I haven't gotten an asthma attack yet from soldering. And I, I am a chronic asthmatic since I was little, so... Someone has to be careful, it's me, but... Because it doesn't affect me, and I've been doing this for a while. Uh, of course, I, not, not everyone is the same, so be careful. And a small extracting fan is enough. You don't need a, f a fume hood or fume extractor of the expensive kind. Just checking so I don't have any bridges. I have the screen to my right when I'm soldering. The microscope is a HDMI microscope. It, do it doesn't have the overhead uh, binocular vision. And these uh, connectors are not the best to solder this close because they, get they melt really easily. But uh, in a pinch, they work really well. So I'm a little off center. Sorry for the OCD guys. <laughs> but I really don't care as long as the, it's, it uh, transfers electricity and uh, signals, it's fine for me. Best way to check your work, clean up afterwards. That's good enough. <laughs> Even I'm getting seasick of this uh, swing, swinging, so I'm going definitely going to fix the microscope holder very soon. I'm just checking how well they're fastened. It looks solid. Okay, so we need to interconnect these uh, that one looks to be connected to the side so that's fine maybe yeah maybe scrape off a bit and just check if we have some trace underneath and we do This is just for sanity. Sometimes they put the, the dark solder mask nearby and you can't really see the trace underneath. But that looks fine. These are super tiny, uh, the traces. So I 
I'm testing the entire connector strength. It's pretty good. But uh, like I said, I put some super glue on the on it after I was done, just to make it permanent. Because I'm not taking the front cover off the computer anytime soon. Maybe when it gets dirty and for the dusting and stuff, but otherwise, not really necessary. And I actually don't need to pull off the connector because uh, I was smart and made a long wire. See, I'm getting fancy here, putting on the overhead cam as I uh, record the microscope. <laughs> Trying to be a better YouTuber. It's hard. Time constraints I have are really tight, so I don't get to do a lot of videos anymore. I am trying to ramp up. I do have like 20 videos in the works, but all of them are halfway done. So I'm measuring to see if I have a good connection. And that won't work. I'm just checking so it's not shorted to the next pin. open line so yeah we don't have a connection there we need to fix that do we have a connection from there to there yes we do and from there we don't so there is no no bridging even if it looks like it from one angle it's better to measure now than to short something else out as well just because of bridging so we need to make a small bridge wire there goes to there and uh, that's the trace yeah i'm just scraping off a little bit of the of the solder mask here so i can check continuity from the pin and there is continuity so that seems to work so we have continuity from everywhere except the, the broken trace parts of course i put on the overhead light from the microscope light and you can see it flickers quite a lot the and you see the blinking that's from the overhead light as well so it's horrible but uh, it works it may lets me see what i need to see of course i'll make a video on how i made my own led lights uh, there are some to buy but normally led lights don't come with specifications on frequency and stuff so you don't know if they're going to flicker until you have them at home or at least they're not, not the cheap ones if you want ones with guaranteed no flicker on the camera and stuff uh, professional lighting they're quite expensive the 100 plus euros for a small uh, 10 by 10 led light centimeters of course and uh, the space i'm working in is quite dark it's a corner in my house uh, i don't have anything anywhere else to put the video recording stuff so I'm not rich, I don't own my house, I just rent. It's a small 70 square meter house, so don't judge, please. <laughs> I'm getting my own place very soon, hopefully. I'm working on it, I've been working on it for years. So I'm holding a small piece of wire here. This is Kner wire without the shielding. Uh, I think it's 20 AUG or 18. I can't remember uh, if the, the AUG goes up. Yeah, I think all 30 something. Uh, it, it's really, really, really thin. <laughs> I took off the shielding on top. Just because it's such a short wire, it will just get in the way and melt. Do one at a time. I should have pre-tinned the wire, but fine. And we are doing this uh, because this 
wires heat up quite fast, use the tweezers to hold it down while you heat up the other side. So it doesn't get loose from the other side where you just solder it to. And the tweezers also absorb a little bit of heat, so it won't... Uh, what's a, uh, it, won't, it won't transfer all the heat over to the other side, so that's good. It's not really one to solder, but I think that's good enough. The camera does trick you quite a lot. So metal fatigue is your friend here to take off uh, small wires and stuff. Just bend them back and forth a few times and they get loose. I noticed the uh, joint wasn't too good on the microscope, so I think I'm going for a filler. Fill it with a nice fresh solder. Don't forget the pads come with uh, solder from the factory that's lead free and harder to solder. Requires a lot more heat. But if you're going to desolder and solder everything back with uh, lead free or, or leaded solder, you're going to be here a while. So sometimes it's good enough to just mix the solders. There we go. It should work. It should snap off anytime soon. You can see my finger to the left. And and this trace is kind of small. Okay. So, uh, rule of thumb. When you're doing this kind of work, move the workpiece to make it comfortable for you and not the other way around. Uh, so you, you're holding with your dominant hand uh, the soldering iron so you can place stuff. And you, you rest your hand so you can... Uh, put the wires in the right place immediately so you don't need to suffer too much. I should have straightened out the wire uh, a little bit more because it can go this is so small that you can actually by mistake the wire can touch the other side so I forgot the flux again uh, I needed to flux this. See what I mean with the wire. So it's almost touching the pin next to it. And that's not, not good, obviously. Uh, so uh, if you straighten the wire out, you don't have that issue because... Now, uh, my f frame of thought here was, okay, but I... I attach the back wire first and then I straighten it out. So, and here I go. <laughs> Not the best uh, solution, of course. Would be better just to bend the wire or keep it straight or cut off the piece that's bent. Uh, that looks pretty secure. Uh, still, I don't like that the wire is uh, almost touching the other pad because I was lazy. This is laziness and nothing else. It's not hard to cut off the piece that's bent. Like I said, it was 3 in the morning. so I have my excuses. <laughs> I was tired. I wanted the video out quickly. Uh, so I could do the the build video for my PC. Okay, I'm uh, just checking my work. Okay, time to check our work. Checking continuity. There's continuity there. Trying to get continuity reading on the pin, but I wasn't C 
seeing the flux when I was doing this at the middle of the night, but the pin has a lot of flux on it and uh, makes a bad connection. So you need to press pretty hard to make it work. So I noticed the high resistance, so I just repositioned the pin, uh, probe and now it works. So always double check. It's because it showed a resistance of uh, 0.6 ohms, which is quite a lot for a straight wire. This has uh, continuity as well. So just double checking from the resistor to the other resistor. Uh, that's usually the best way to do it because if the connection is complete, that will fix it. Or that will show that it works. Uh, sorry. I know these videos are quite long, but I don't want to skip a step if someone desperately needs to copy or do something similar. And uh, we can discuss if this is actually worth doing. So, normally, if the part is available, it's not worth fixing it if it's not really expensive or rare or whatever. But uh, in this case, it's pr practically impossible to get a spare part. Uh, you have to buy a new ca uh, other case and take the display out because these don't exist anymore. Uh, the same case with uh, video games and stuff uh, from the 80s and 90s. It's really hard to get parts for them. So you need a donor to make them work. So in that case, it's worth fixing. And uh, in this case, we can actually replace this with something else, like an Arduino with a TFT board, and make our own animations that show the temperature and stuff. And it will look quite good. But I do like the aesthetics of this uh, display. So I would... Uh, gladly use that instead of an Arduino, but you can. So that's an uh, alternative if you want to. I may be doing that in some capacity in the future, making my own module that displays temperature and uh, other stuff. Could be a fun project. Maybe if PCB way is listening, you can pro probably sponsor me and I'll make some PCBs for you <laughs> or design them. You can make the PCBs. Anyway, okay, back to the video. <laughs> Going on a tangent here. I'm still ways off of getting monetized and uh, getting sponsors. Usually 2 3k subscribers and then you, sh you start getting sponsorships later here and there. I wouldn't mind working with PCB Way. Uh, Richard worked with them uh, from Learn Electronics Repair, and they're pretty forgiving and uh, give you free, free hands on how to do stuff. I uh, just put the ring light close by to get a better view of the actual board because it was, like I said, really late. So I need as much light as possible to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get it in focus with some strong lights. The ring light is really, really bad. These are the cheapest ones that come from AliExpress. They give a lot of glare, but I don't have a choice right now. I'm working on a project to fix this glare using polarizers instead of the normal fix that's two lights, one from each side instead of one ring from the middle. So uh, I'll explain that in the next uh, in the video I make the polarizer. That video will involve uh, 3D printing and some design work uh, and uh, testing because I haven't seen it been done yet and I don't know if it's possible. It's really sandy here today, so if you hear my my voice is a little different is because I have some allergies 
Okay, so I'm looking up some DuPont cables here. I have a big box of them. So I just want to test the power. So I'm taking two male to females. So that's the ground pin and that's the power and I missed. I didn't notice this at the time that I had put it in the wrong place. But for some reason or other, I'm using uh, the power leads that came with the power supply from China, the El Chipo one. Uh, these are incorporated in my bench power supply. I really don't like the bench power supply, it's uh, unreliable when it sh uh, shows the voltage. I've m measured the voltage and it's not correct all the time. But I'm still waiting for some small parts to build in the other power supply I have. I bought a, a micro power PSU, bench PSU you can build into your own enclosure. But I need banana plugs and stuff and uh, build in the power supply as well because it uses an external power supply to generate all the voltages and amperages that's constant current constant voltage and a few other things that are really nice so you can see the lcd lights up and i have it at five volts right now uh, it doesn't it's really really faint uh, doesn't really show much so and it, it shows the err uh, error so thinking maybe that's because it can't find the probe uh, for the temperature or something else I actually thought I wasn't able to fix this so I'm just a little confused uh, sorry for the dirty fingers car broke down I had to change the intercooler pipe from the turbo to the intercooler uh, on the ground outside a panic job so so ignore the the grease on my fingers the display is kind of dirty so I, I was thinking maybe the pins on the back were bad and then I started to crank up the voltage uh, I think I'm at 9 volts here I, I do know PCs only output 5 and 12 just wanted to get, give you a nice view of what I see. But it is, seems to work, it just gives an error. So, But as you remember, I hooked up the power to the wrong pin. So for some reason or other, uh, it still displays something when you pu pump in voltage through the wrong pin. Uh, so... I could have destroyed the LCD here. So please be more careful than I was <laughs> when you're testing out stuff. I think I notice here the power is on the wrong pin. No, not yet. I think I don't notice for a while, but that's fine. Uh, th this is what the video is for. It's so you can see that everyone makes mistakes. There is n no easy way to do this. Uh, just be more uh, attentive and careful. And don't do this kind of work at 3 in the morning. <laughs> that would help a bit. So I was going to measure voltages. I don't want it shorting out to the ground, so I'm trying to maneuver it around. So I thought first the backlight had gone on this because it doesn't light up orange like the pictures do on on the internet. I have it on DC volts. I have it set to 5 volts. Still haven't noticed uh, that I have it wrong. 
so plus and minus uh, so I, I'm only getting three something volts uh, fluctuating so that's the pulsed signal for the backlight The, I'm uh, thinking maybe it's the clock or the crystal that's in the little canister over there. Then I don't think I went through removing it at least. I'm quite confused at this time. And then I notice that the power is on the wrong pin. So here I'm dreading I destroyed the LCD because I put power into the uh, what is what's it called uh, the thermistor inputs instead. I'm trying to keep it in place. I put the power on again and up to 12 volts. I start slowly at 5 and then go up slowly. So the reason I don't like the power supply, the one that I have at, uh, from... Uh, the reason I don't like the power supply that came with the soldering station is because uh, it's really fiddly to get the right voltage and when it shows a voltage on the display it's not the same one, uh, it can differ half a volt sometimes depends on the load so and here I'm getting to 12 volts and I can see the backlights turning on I'm just checking so it doesn't get too hot <laughs> because I'm not sure if this is a 5 volt or 12 volt uh, display usually the colors indicate what voltage it is in a computer case uh, orange or Red is 5 volts and uh, yellow is 12. And black is obviously ground. So I turned off the multimeter. Don't need it anymore because I noticed it actually lights up. But uh, as you can, as you saw, you can't really see at the display on the image when you put in voltage the right way around so I was kind of confused on why I saw image when I put in power through the thermistor but not the actual power lines it just shows an orange backlight lighting up and it, then it hit me if the thermistor is present it starts up so it, it doesn't boot without the thermistor inside and the thermistor makes a small voltage or a small resistance, depends on how they work. Thermistors uh, use, uh, make a small voltage. Then there are resistive ones that uh, make a small resistance. So it depends on what it wants. Okay, so I went and got a thing I got from Richard as well, from Learn Electronics Repair. It's uh, almost the same thing, but, but it's an external drive. So this shows the temperature and stuff, and it has uh, USB ports and everything else. I was going to try to fix this, but it's too bulky. I don't want it in the computer. So, but I noticed it has had uh, these uh, thermocouples or thermistor with labeling on them. So I thought maybe maybe it's the same type because this is from the same era uh, in computers. Uh, this display as well. It came with the computer. I'm guessing. Because it was inside when I got it from Richard. So I thought, okay, then I'll cut one off and test one. See if I can get the temperature right. It uh, could be that this is not compatible because there are different types of uh, thermocouples or thermistors. I do have a thermocouple on my multimeter if I have to double check if the temperatures are right. So I took off the connector for all the temperature sensors. Okay, so, so the easiest way for me to do this, 
was thinking of maybe loosening in the contacts so I can keep the connector complete, but no. It's easy to just cut off one of the ends. We're just checking to see if I can see what type it is, but kind of hard because they're all covered. So I didn't cut it short uh, intentionally here because if I do and I want to resolder it and use the other one just in case in the future, I can't. <laughs> so this is a future proof if I want to do it or not. Using the clippers back uh, upside down or backwards uh, ensures that you don't clip off the wire inside. Don't know why this, this is, but it's because of the 90 degree, I think. I need new Knipex clippers because these are on their way out. They don't cut as good anymore. I've, I've used them to even cut tin, so I'm not surprised. I'm going to screw these wires together and tin the contacts. Not for the reason you think. I'm not going to solder a connector on this. So I I'm think I'm off camera doing it because I need three hands for this. Yeah, I notice I'm off frames. Like I said, you need about three hands to do this kind of <laughs> maneuver. If you have some helping hands, that will help. Put some flux on the wire as well, that would also help. Uh, the thing I'm doing here is r making the tip of the wire rigid. And I twisted it up, so it's... So it's easier to put some uh, solder on. And the reason I want it rigid is because I'm going to force these in into the DuPont connectors I had before. Uh, I noticed the solder doesn't take, so I put some flux on. Flux is very important for this kind of work, obviously. If you've never used flux before, please do. <laughs> Also, a uh, quick reminder, I do have a second channel together with Richard from El Learn Electronics Repair and Detlef Amend. Uh, he is also a YouTuber. Uh, we have a ut new YouTube channel we collaborate with. It's a live stream every other Sunday. And uh, we do a lot of fun stuff over there. We're going to post some videos eventually uh, and some bigger projects. So if you haven't looked at it, Check it out. It's the learn uh, the, the electronics channel. All thing, uh, everything together. Just search for it. Uh, I think I have an announcement video with a link as well. So just check my channel. Okay, enough uh, shameless plugging. <laughs> Let's go with this. And this is why I want to solder on the wires, so I can do this for a quick test. And they actually fit so well. I actually left like left it like this inside the computer. So I'm putting them there. I'm hoping it's the right uh, right way around. Usually it doesn't have a a polarity. Hope I'm hoping it doesn't. Removing my solder, that's way too thin for almost all the work I do. I'm going to buy a thicker one. This is a 0 0.3 wire, I think. I need a 0 0.6 and a 1 millimeter one for thicker things. It does work. Okay, so I have a backlight and I have some strange bugging. That's the voltage, I'm guessing, or the connection. 
so it fixed itself after the voltage was pumped up it shows 28 degrees that well, looks about right and uh, mind you this is 3 in the morning by the way <laughs> it's really hot here and I want to see if the temperature changes and it does my fingers it works so fix done uh, I think the other connectors that are on the board is for the HDD and the power thingy on the top to show it uh, when the, you have HDD activity. So instead of connecting it to the front panel of your case, you connect it here. Uh, not really necessary uh, for mechanical drives, maybe. I do have two, but I don't want to see it blinking all the time. So yeah, uh, and the temperature does change pretty quickly. This is more for me to see the temperature inside the case because I have a 3090 in the new 5900X. Of course, the 5900X is water cooled and the coolers are outside. But this is uh, quite a nice little thing uh, to have. It also shows the running time, uh, the working uh, time, it's the up time of the computer. So I can see at any time how long it's been on. And uh, because I don't turn off my computer at all, it's <laughs> it's kind of useful to know when the last uh, restart was done. It does reset when you put the computer to sleep as well. Okay, so I'm just pulling everything out. I used the uh, old fan header uh, connector for Molex and used that as a power input for this. And I used the 12 volt line because uh, th this uh, LCD apparently works on 12 volts. I've tried it on 5, it's too dim. Uh, it does start up w with the Fermister connected. Times for some uh, cleaning of the screen and the case just before assembly. Uh, I I'm using uh, I IPA uh, like I will always do. Do not spray it on the screen itself because it can leak underneath and it never dries. Spray it on a paper towel and use it to scrub instead. And do not use paint thinner for this because you're going to melt off the protective layer on top and the polarizer. From experience, I took acetone instead of uh, the sprayer with IPA and I mel melted off the screen protector on LCD screen once. I had the same spray bottle for both, so <laughs> I do have a reason why it happened. Just removing all the residue it has a lot this was very filthy when I got it take your time so time to mount it comes with a mounting brace that goes connected on top uh, it's a little fiddly to get into place but when it's there it works this is the brace I was talking about. I do like the case design of this thing. So you see the wire on the top right? It's for the little uh, Cobra light. Or Viper. Final touches. It's done. Okay, thank you for watching until the end. Next video will be a repair attempt on a pro controller. Richard challenged me on our second channel, the electronic channel. Look it up. Thank you for watching. Bye.